Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains a repeat offender? I guess that kind of works. Whatever. Anyway, today we are going to discuss a man who went from mild annoyance to unspeakable legend because of his unique fixation on constantly hijacking the New York subway trains. He just couldn't stop doing that, and that's his legacy. This is the story of Darius Mikolo. Darius McCollum was born in Brooklyn, New York, on the 28th of March, 1965. As a young kid, he was fascinated by trains. And, you know, I think most of us, given my channel's general focus around here, and many of you I know are rail fans, we can totally understand why he likes trains. We like trains. Trains are cool. But Darius really like trains. Like, really, really like trains. To the point that he would spend most of his time riding the New York subway. Sometimes for days. When he was younger, he was just thought as an odd kid. And of course, that was back in the late 60s and mid-70s. And society has taken great strides in terms of mental health diagnosis since then. Nowadays, we know that Darius actually falls in the autism spectrum. He was actually diagnosed with Asperger's as an adult. The thing about Darius is that he loved the train so much that he wanted to be a part of the whole system. He wanted to run the train. He wanted to be around the trains. And you'd think that logically, okay, that means he should just get a job when he gets older with the Metropolitan Transport Authority, or MTA. They're the ones responsible for running the New York City subway system. And at first it seemed like he might be on the path to do that. He spent so much time around MTA property that many of the MTA employees became quite familiar with him, to the point of allowing him to do menial work around the train, such as sweeping and things like that. But it got to the point where some of the motormen permitted him to drive some of the trains for short distances. This is how he learned to operate the subway cars. And he was riding the subway so much anyway that he already memorized the routes. It's often been assumed, and it's probably likely, that Darius knows the New York subway's routes and schedules far better than most of the motormen actually do. But when he reached the age of 15, Darius would display what one could possibly refer to as a bit of a lack of impulse control. His first arrest occurred at that age, in 1980. And mind you, I'm going to go over just a few of his offenses with regards to this, but understand that Darius was arrested over 30 times in relation to impersonating an MTA employee. But in 1980, he actually drove an E-subway train with passengers on it for a total of six stops. Now, recognize that when Darius hijacks a train, he doesn't really hijack it in a way that you would think one would hijack something. He literally doesn't operate the train in a way that's any different from the way they're supposed to be operated. He quite literally follows the schedule, allows people to get on and off the train, he literally drives them as normal, to the point that during many of his offenses, the passengers had no idea anything was amiss, because Darius wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. The only reason he got caught was that he was a 15-year-old kid, and at least one of the passengers noticed this and was concerned as to why a teenager was operating a subway train. He was arrested and thrown in jail at Rikers Island. While he was in there, he actually wrote to the New York City Department of Correction and asked if he could drive one of their buses. By the mid-1990s, he had become kind of a cult figure among people that were familiar with his story. The MTA made it a point to put wanted posters for him on their trains and stations so riders could report sightings of him because his behavior was becoming such an issue. Now you might be wondering if Darius was so good at driving the subway, why didn't the MTA just give him a job? 
Well, for one thing, he was in jail. And it seems to be down to that whole impulse control. The legal liability involved with hiring someone like Darius makes the MTA a little hesitant to do something like that. Now, I'm not saying Darius would ever do anything wrong, and in fact, he might actually be a genuinely good subway driver. But I can also totally understand the MTA not wanting to take the risk here, because it's not like they're giving him a desk job or something. He'd be in charge of trains that transport millions of people every single day. The New York City subway is one of the busiest railroad networks in the United States. Taking a risk on someone like Darius, who's already proven to have just zero impulse control, might be a bit of a hard sell for people that are trying to keep the subways as safe as possible in terms of their operation. Darius is seriously ingrained in the autistic spectrum. It's clear he has some issues that just weren't resolved, and likely needs some kind of mental help. Because it's one thing to like trains a lot, it's another one to constantly steal them. By the year 2000, he'd been jailed 19 times for crimes relating to the Transit Authority. He pled guilty for charges of forgery and burglary for signing out a train, according to proper MTA procedure, to perform customary duties, and then signing it back in. Again, he just took it out and did genuine work for the MTA, but he wasn't actually working for them. Every time he steals something, he literally just operates it in the way it's supposed to. For that offense, he was sentenced to another two and a half to five years in prison. And then in 2005, he was apprehended again at the Long Island Railroad Yard and was found to have keys to an M7 rail car in his pocket. How did he get these? Well, again, even by this point, a lot of the MTA's actual employees were friends with Darius. Many of them were totally on board with having him around, and these particular keys were actually given to him by those employees so he could cover some of their shifts. In this regard, I would almost argue that Darius is being taken advantage of. Like, am I the only one who's just a little bit uncomfortable with the notice of taking advantage of a mentally handicapped man just so you can have a day off? Like, this just isn't right. Especially given he's already spent so much of his life in jail, which he went back to for doing this again. He was released on parole in 2006, but he was re-imprisoned for breaking that parole because he was found to be in possession of railroad property. Now, I just want to talk about this for a second because I think that's hysterical. Darius is the type of guy where being in possession of railroad property is considered a parole violation. You know, for most parolees, a violation would be having, like, drug paraphernalia or a weapon of some kind, or something, like, criminal. But if Darius has anything related to MDA on his person or in his home, that's considered a parole violation for him. This is such a weird case. On June 13, 2008, Darius, who was 43 at the time, by the way, was arrested again. This time he was found to be wearing a hard hat and carrying a knapsack, flashlight, and gloves with an MTA logo. He was dressed like MTA track workers typically are, and he was detained after he was caught trying to enter a restricted area of a midtown station. He was charged, again, with criminal impersonation, criminal trespass, and possession of burglary tools. A hammer and screwdriver were in his backpack. The last charge is often debated, as it's believed he only put those in there, not because he was necessarily doing any burglary, but because those are typical for the repair equipment that all MTA maintenance workers would be carrying. Still, he was put in jail again. And still later, on August 31st, 2010, he was arrested for the 27th time. And this time he was charged with grand larceny and possession of stolen property in connection with the theft of a private bus. Oh yes, Darius moved on from subways and now thought, okay, well, if they won't let me steal the subways, maybe they'll let me steal a bus. He took a private bus from a Trailways of New York terminal in Hoboken, New Jersey. He boarded the bus at approximately 6.30 a.m. that morning and discovered that the keys were left in the ignition. Darius, just completely unequipped to restrain any impulses he may have to actually take out any vehicle at any time, commandeered the bus and the theft was completely unnoticed for two hours as he drove it around John F. Kennedy International Airport and Jamaica, Queens. 
Once he was caught, he was taken into custody without incident, and the police this time pointed out that he's a very smart guy, and that he was a gentleman during the arrest. Like, Darius just seems like a genuinely nice guy, he just has this weird, unique fixation on being a part of the public transit system, but has no capacity to actually understand how to get legally into the industry. He just steals the stuff. He pled guilty to stealing that bus, and he was released on parole on December 24th, 2013, under the condition that he was to voluntarily enter cognitive behavioral therapy, which, to be brutally honest, I think should have been something established well before now. Like, it's obvious that Darius needs some kind of mental therapy. And I'm not trying to shame the man for that, but I'm just saying that mental health is something we need to push and encourage when it comes to modern society. He has a genuine diagnosis and a genuine disability that has caused him to remain in prison for a significant portion of his existence. This isn't okay. He should have been put into a mental health program well before his 27th arrest for doing the same thing. But even assuming he was in therapy, on November 11th, 2015, he was arrested again. This time, he stole a Greyhound bus from the Port Authority bus terminal in Manhattan. He drove the bus for about two hours, again, until he was arrested, again. According to the New York Times, Darius joked this time during his arrest and said, I'm stealing a plane next. And on one hand, that's kind of funny. I think Darius is kind of a clever guy. That was amusing. Also, Darius, my homie, my main man, my brother from another mother. Probably not the best idea to joke about hijacking a plane in New York City. I know what you meant. I thought it was funny. But I'm just saying, probably not the best location to be making a joke like that. Now by that point, his parents actually moved to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And they're of the opinion that Darius probably shouldn't be in New York City at all anymore. The temptation to steal public transit anything is apparently too great for him to restrain himself. But ironically, the parole conditions he's been under have been the reason why he had to remain in New York City. It was only recently that some of the judges started considering that perhaps maybe Darius just shouldn't be in New York. Even nowadays, his parents and autism advocates try to push for the idea of the MTA just straight up hiring Darius, but again, there's that legal liability. They just can't take a risk on someone like him due to his history. And I wish I had a happy ending to report for you guys, because I kind of like Darius. I think he's definitely been doing the wrong thing, but it's clear from an early age he wasn't given the help and tools he needed to function in society. He had a fixation and interest in trains. He loved the system. He loved the simplicity and the routine of it, the predictability of it. It was just a simple thing that made him happy. And had he been guided down the right path, instead of being known as a serial hijacker of subway trains, well, he probably wouldn't be known at all. He'd just be one of the official motormen. He'd have a solid career with solid benefits, and he'd be happy because he'd be driving these trains as his job. But instead, he's been spending most of his life in prison. And I feel like there was a better way for this to be handled, and it might be too late to do anything now. As of this year, he is 57 years old, nearing an age when most people would be retiring. And as of now, he's not on the streets. In January of 2018, Darius took a plea bargain in which he agreed to go to a psychiatric institution for an indefinite period of time. According to the sources I've read, this institution is actually meant for the criminally insane. The lockdown nature of it is meant for people who can't help themselves but to, say, murder people, or things like that. I don't think Darius is the type of guy who really belongs in a place like that. While what he has done historically is criminal, I don't think he's inherently dangerous. Even when he took the trains, he only operated them the way they normally would have been. To imply that the man is criminally insane 
is a bit of a stretch, as it just kind of implies he's a serial killer or something. When anyone who has actually known Darius, according to the articles I've read, say he's actually a really nice guy. He just loves trains a little too much. As for what his future may hold, I don't know, but I really hope a compromise can be reached and he finds a place for himself in the world. Because 57 years is a long time for someone to never really feel like they belong. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Brightline Blue Joshua Long Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Mr. Black Rose Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, and Lock Kraken. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.